Good morning. Can I, can I hear you again? Good morning. Good morning. Amen. Welcome to our 11 o'clock a.m. service. Amen. God is so good to us. Amen. Amen. He woke us up this morning. Amen. Bright, early, and bushy tail. Amen. To get ourselves dressed and in order. Amen. To come into the house. Amen. And to get and to put our work in. Because I understand that if we serve God right, amen, God going to bless us right. Amen. amen. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We honor you with all our praises given unto you this morning. And Father, I pray that you would touch all of our hearts and our bodies and our soul. That we will be the one that you will use in your sanctuary. Amen. And that we will be the one, amen, the, to be a witness for your, for your kingdom. And Father, I pray this morning, Lord God, that you will have your way. Control this service the way that you want it to go. And Father, I pray that you would touch hearts, save souls. Amen. Raise, they, raise those that, are, that has been falling. Father, I pray right now that you would send those, amen, in the right direction, Lord God, that they will honor you with goodness and praise given unto your name. Father, we thank you for everything that you've done for Mount Calvary. Father, we thank you for what you're going to do in the future. We believe, we trust, we have faith that you're going to do great things in Jesus name father we pray amen as the musician comes amen to give us praise and songs father I pray that you would touch their hearts that they will sing unto your name father we give you praise glory and honor let every heart say amen amen, amen. praise the Lord everybody amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. The Bible says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. How many of you are glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Oh, we can do a little bit better than that. How many of you are glad to be in the house of the Lord today? All right, all right. I told, I told 8 a.m. service. I said, Tracy's back, so we got we to act like we like to have church, because if you don't, you know I'll have it by myself. Uh, and you guys see that we don't have no musicians, so guess what that means? We the musicians, huh? So can we have a little bit of old time wake church today? Can you get on your feet in here? Can everybody raise on their feet? The old saints used to open up church like this. There is power in the name of Jesus. Oh, there's power in the name of Jesus. Oh, there's power in the name of Jesus. Oh, there's love in the name of Jesus. Oh, there's love in the name of Jesus. There's so much love. Yeah, there is joy in the name of How many know there's joy? Joy in the name of Where my double clap is at? That's all right. Oh, my, 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 my. Oh, then one of the deacons would say, I get joy when I think about. What is that for me? I get joy when I think about. What is that for me? I get joy when I think about. What is that for me? I get joy when I think about Oh, you can't tell it, let me tell it Oh, you can't tell it, let me tell it I get joy, joy, joy I get joy, 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 joy That's what he's done That's what he's done That's what he's done that's what, That's what he's done. He picked me up That's what he's done. and he turned me around. That's what he's done. He placed my feet That's 
solid ground. He made me whole and he saved my soul. He made me whole and he saved my soul. I was sinking deep, deep, deep in sin. But he buried me from all that was taking me down. Living, he loved me. Dying, he saved me. Buried, he carried my sins far away. That's what he's done. That's what he's done. How many know? That's what he's done. That's what he's done. Come on. Put your hands together. Come on, Mount Carver, and shout hallelujah. Come on, get in the habit of giving God glory. Shout hallelujah. We serve a mighty God. Oh, my, 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 my. Oh, say, say power, Lord. We need your power. power. Say power, Lord. Your saving power. Your healing power. We need your power. We want your power. We need your power. I can't live right without your power. I can't talk right without your power. Power to live right. Power to walk right. Power to talk right. Power. 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 Power in my home. Power in my job. Jesus, 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 what's his name, call his name, I can't hear you call him, I can't hear you call him, Jesus, Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the noonday, Jesus in the midnight, Jesus when you need him, friend to the friendless, brother to the brother, Father to the fatherless, Jesus. Lily of the Valley, Jesus. Bright and Morning Star. Jesus. That's his name. Jesus. What's his name? Jesus. Come on, put your hands together. Jesus. Oh. Send it on down, Lord. Send it on down, Lord. How many of y'all know that? Oh, we can't live right till you sit it on down. Lord, let your Holy Ghost uh -huh. on down. Oh, sit it on down, Lord. Sit it on down. There we go. Oh, we can't talk right till you sit it on down. Lord, Your power. power we need your power, power we want that power power, power to live right power, power to talk right power power power, 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 power we want that power, power say power Lord power, power Lord come on everybody power. put your hands on If you want the Lord's power, somebody shout power in this house. Hey, hallelujah. Oh, 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 there is power in the name of Jesus. Oh, there's power in the name of Jesus. Oh, there is power. Next year, say power, Lord. Sing it just like that. Say power, Lord. We want your power, and we need your power. I can't live right without your power, Lord. I can't talk right without your power, Lord. Come on, somebody shout power. Come on, look at the person next to you. Say power. One, two, the great 
No concert. Come on, put your hands together. Come on, we've come to magnify the Lord. Come on, help me say, God is great. God is great. And He's greatly to be praised. Come on, one more time from the top. Come on, say the greatness of the Lord. The greatness of the Lord is inconceivable. And he's greatly to be praised. Why don't you join us? Say, God is great. God is great. Oh, oh, oh. And greatly to be praised. Say, God is great. God is great. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Say, God is great. God is great. Say, God is great. Our God is. God is great. Oh, oh. God is great. God, God is great. And greatly to be praised. And greatly to be praised. Now come on and look at the person next to you and say, God is great. Come on, declare that to your neighbor. God is great. He's great on a Monday. Hallelujah. He's great on a Tuesday. Hallelujah. He's great on a Wednesday and a Thursday. Money in my pocket, God is great. When I don't have it at all, God is still great. I dare you to shout great God in this place. Come on, say great God in this place. Hallelujah.
truly, truly, truly indeed, we serve a great living God. Amen. A God, amen, that's not dead. But he's alive and well. Amen. He's alive and well. God's still speaking to us. Amen. He's still speaking to us. I want to I wanna ask the question, do we have any first time visitors that is in the house this morning? Visiting Mount Calvary. Amen. Amen. Let's give God some praise. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for coming and joining us, being a part of worship service. Amen. At our 11 o'clock a.m. service. Amen. God bless you. Amen. And at this, at this time, amen, God always is in the atmosphere. He's always there. Amen. He's he, he looking down on us. Amen. And he see bitterness. Amen. He see heartaches. He see pain. Amen. He see agony. And we take this time and moment, amen, to allow you, amen, if God put it on your heart, amen, to come, amen, to the altar, amen. And as you come to the altar, realize, amen, that God, amen, will meet you here. Amen. God will meet you anywhere, amen, he wants to, amen, just if you allow him to reach out, amen, and touch you when you come to the altar. God want to please your case. Amen. He will please it. God is worthy to be praised. Amen. He's always there for us. If we just acknowledge the goodness of God, he will show up. Amen. He will show up. And not only he show out, but he'll prove his power that he has for you. Amen. We're going to pray. Amen. Amen. Father, we come. Those that are at the door, could you let them in? Could you let them in? Because it will be all over in the morning. Father, we thank you for this chance and this opportunity that we did not bag out. We did not turn our backs on you. But Lord, we thank you that you brought us to your place of worship. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus that we are standing in your presence because we all are standing in some kind of need and we understand that you are here to supply it and father i pray right now that you will take full control of us our bodies our minds and our hearts and lord god that you will see what's in us lord god and you want to draw it out of us and lord i pray right now that everybody that is standing under the sound of your voice and under the sound of your authority right now father i pray that you will touch every individual problems issues that they are facing right now and lord i know that you are the only god that will be able to come in and to intervene and to work it out and father i thank you in the name of jesus that you will always be there for us you will never leave us nor will you forsake us we thank you in the name of jesus we glorify your holy name because there's no name that has been given under man that you will be able to stand against all odds in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we thank you. We thank you for those that then approach the altar. Father, we pray that you would test their hearts where they're standing right now. And if there has a problem, Father, I pray that you will work it out. Give them the peace. Give them the joy, amen, that they have been longing for. 
Father, and I pray, Lord God, for Pastor Jeremiah Parks, Lord God, as he come. I pray, Lord God, that you will pour down your strength. Give him the power, the authority to stand up and proclaim your good news to us. Father, I pray right now, Lord God, that every individual that's in this place, Lord, you would touch in a special way. Lord, we give you praise. We honor you for all that you've done. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. An offering? Amen. We have, of course, uh, some of us have already known that we have an app, amen, that you can go to to give your tithes and your offering. Amen. 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 I want you to understand something. I'm going to add this. There shouldn't be an excuse, amen, when it comes to giving. Because the reason why I'm saying this is because you didn't receive what you got on your own. God bless you with it. The Bible said the more you give, the more will be given unto you. Try God and see what he will do for you. Amen. Let us, Father, we thank you for those that have a heart and a desire to give in this offering this morning. Father, and I pray, Lord God, that we will give, amen, accordingly what we have to give. And Father, I pray right now that you would touch the hearts, touch the minds that didn't have it to give. Father, I pray that you would bless them continually. Lord, we give you praise, glory, and honor. Let every heart say amen. Amen. You may stand. Be stand. You may stand. Amen. It is time giving unto the ushers. what got us through. That's what my grandma used to sing when she was washing our clothes. Let us stand. At 8 a.m. service, I mentioned that um, I mean, we have services like this, but that's when I remember when I was younger, we didn't have musicians. Um, there was a period of time, and that was when we had some of the greatest church. Um, one thing I mentioned at rehearsal in this morning is that you can tell those who really, really have a relationship with the Lord because when they get in the house of God, they don't need these things because these are crutches. <laughs> Drums and click tracks. I love them all, but when you got it on the inside of you, you don't need no musicians to help you dance. When you got it on the inside of you, you don't need no musician to get you to tune up. You can tune up in the mirror and to encourage yourself. Um, so as, we, as I told Eddie M. Service, let's get in the habit of, of getting in a congregational setting of worship. Let us worship together because it was in the Bible when they were in one accord and in one place. And guess what happened? The spirit fell. I mean, he can do that without a drum set. The yes, spirit can, can fall in here without, without the musicians. And it only happens when we get in a place of, of agreement and we worship the Lord together. Can you guys help us before we hear the word today? There's a song that goes, How great is our God. Sing with me how great. Is that anybody's testimony? Is our God. All we sing how great. Oh, yes. How great. Is our God? There go our choir members, y'all. Y'all, thank you. Come on, help me say, How great is our God? How great is our God? Is our God. Sing with me. Sing with me. How great oh. is our God? And all will see. All will 
You're worthy of our praise. Oh, and our hearts will sing. And our hearts will sing. How great He is our God. Can you be a big old church and you stand to your feet if you know you serve a great God? Come on, say, How great He is our God. The song that goes like this, it says, I searched all over, couldn't find nobody. Search high, search high and low, still couldn't find nobody. How many know there's nobody greater? Nobody greater. There's nobody greater. There's nobody greater than you. Come on, can we sing that in this house today? Does anybody believe that today? Come on, say, searched all over, searched all over. Couldn't find, couldn't find nobody. Search high and low, search high and low. Still couldn't find nobody. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Oh, nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater than you. Help me say, you are the name above all names. Name above all names. You're worthy of our praise. Worthy Hallelujah. Of our praise. Oh, mighty are the works of your hands. Mighty Hallelujah. Of your oh, mighty are the works of your hands. Oh, your God, hands. you are the name above all names. Say, mighty are the works of your hands. Oh, God, the name above all names. You're worthy of our praise. Oh, mighty are the works of your hands. Oh, mighty are the works of your hands. Is our God sing with me? Sing with me. Uh huh. Is our God? Y'all sound good out there. All oh, will sing how great. Yes, how great. Oh yes, it's a sweet sound to the Lord. Yes, come on, church. Come on, let's do it one more time. Oh, how great is our God? How great. All right. Is our God? Sing with me. That sounds good, church. It's our God, yes, all we sing, all we sing, how great, come on church, how great is our God, now come on and do me a favor and put your hands together, come on, put your hands together, somebody shout, you're a great God, you're a great God, oh God, you're great in this place, God, you're great in this place, mighty are the works of your hands, Lord, hey. Mighty are the works of your hands. Come on, look at the person next to you and say, we serve a great God. Mighty are the works of his hands. He's the name above all names. He's worthy of all our praise. Mighty are the works of his hands. Mighty are the works of his hands. Mighty through battle, hallelujah. Mighty through the pulling down of strongholds. Come on, I dare you to pull everything down that's not like God. 
Come on, somebody shout, mighty are the works of your hands. Mighty are the works of your hands. Nothing's too hard for my God. Hallelujah. Depression's not too hard for my God. Because mighty are the works of his hands. Come on, put your hands together in here. Somebody shout, mighty. Mighty. Hallelujah. Thank you. We serve a great God, don't we? Our evidence of our existence is the evidence of a great God and a defeated devil. If you don't mind, come on, let's give the music ministry a great hand. We led us in a great way in worship. If you don't mind, bow your heads for a word of prayer as we ask God to bless our time in the word. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for this time together. Thank you for another opportunity to preach your word. Now, Lord, as we begin to preach, prepare preaching people that will live receptive and responsive to your word. Speak, Lord, your servants are listening in Jesus' name. Amen. So let me give a disclaimer, church. Listen, I feel much better than last Sunday, but I'm still not my best, so I need you to say amen real loud. Amen. So we can make this go real quick and real smooth. And for those of you who are headed to brunch or have your bottomless mimosas, you can have that in probably about 30 minutes. I mean, some of y'all looking at me like you so saved, but it's all right. But I want to preach this last sermon, this last installment of a series entitled Resilience. With that being in mind, I want to call your attention Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. And I want to start reading at verse 28. Romans 8, verse 28. To all of our visitors that are visiting with us, uh, thank you so much for coming and worshiping with us. Romans 8, 28 says this, And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. For God knew his people in advance, and he chose them to become like the Son so that his Son would be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And having chose them, he called them to come to him. And having called them, he gave them right standing with himself. And having given them right standing, he gave them his glory. What shall we say about such wonderful things as these? If God is for us, who can ever be against us? Since he did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all, won't he also give us everything else? Who dares accuse us for whom God has chosen for his own? No one, for God himself, has given us right standing with himself. Who then will condemn us? No one, for God, for Christ Jesus, died for us and was raised to life for us. And he is sitting in the place of honor at God's right hand, pleading for us. Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us or if that we have trouble, calamity, or persecuted, or hungry, or destitute, or in danger, or threatened with death. As the scripture says, for your sake we are killed every day, we are being slaughtered like sleep. And no, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ, who loves us. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death, nor life, neither angels, or demons, neither our fears for today, no, our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below, indeed nothing in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. I want to talk about from this simple thought, free from fear. free from fear you know church fear is indeed inevitable think about it all of us are afraid of something perhaps someone on the side of my voice maybe your fear is failure 
everything that you surround yourself with has something positive or something successful going on. And when you look at your life, you perhaps have become overwhelmed to the point that you second guess yourself and you really ask the question, can I really obtain success? Some brother, maybe your fear is the pressure of being placed in a box. The family wants you to go to a certain path as it pertains to your career. However, you want to do something else or something that you enjoy. And now you're apprehensive that what you may have to say may break someone else's heart. Young people, while you have fears, I want you to know adults have fears as well. Perhaps some single mother, you're going crazy because you don't know how you're going to finance Christmas this year. Some father, maybe you're stressed out about how you're going to continue to provide food on the table. All of us are afraid of something. Now, although at times you and I are fearful of what life throws at us, I want to suggest here Paul writes a blueprint that can help cure our issues of fear. Here in this text, Paul, the author of the book of Romans, writes this letter to Rome as he presents Jesus who offers his righteousness as a gracious gift to sinful people. And I want you to know, my brothers and sisters, that's good to know that even when you and I mess up, Jesus will take his time to talk to us. That it doesn't matter how far you are, the grace of God, you're not so far where the grace of God can reach you. Jesus has no problem in lowering himself to talk to us. And here in this 8th chapter of Romans, Paul tells his readers that Jesus has something for those that have a fear of any kind. J Jesus says, Paul, if you're afraid, I, I have something that is able to hold you. It's simply, it's called God's assurance. Yeah, I want you to know when school is at its most stressful point, my sister, God will give you the assurance to let you know that, yes, you can do all things through Christ that is able to give you strength. Yes, even when it, it comes to you, my brother, when it seems as if you feel like you would never get back in right relationship with Jesus, God will give you assurance that let you know his mercies are new every morning. And great is that faithfulness. I'm saying, church, we have his assurance. Why? Because he is the living bread that will never mold. He's the light of the world that would never go out. He's the living water that would never taint. He's the resurrection that will never wither. He's the way that will never go wrong. I I'm saying you and I have his assurance. And for those of us who feels as if you are all alone, I want you to know God's assurance says to you right now, Lo, I am with you always, even until the ends of the world. And I'm sure you are asking your own sanctified imagination. Perhaps you're wondering, how can a woman who perhaps has been the recipient of being abandoned, how is that working for my good? Maybe you're asking the question, how, how, how can I, the fact that I've been perhaps physically or emotionally or even verbally abused, how, how does that work for my good? Well, church, I want you to know this text teaches us that you and I ought to be encouraged knowing that God's plans for us may not always make sense in the eyes of us. Yet we ought to take God at his word knowing everything is working out for our good. So let's walk around this text and see what God has for us to learn. Here's the first thing I want you to know. He's working it out for your good when you know what God's plan. Let the church say no God's plan. Listen to what it says in verse 28. He says, and we know that all things work together for the good of those that love the Lord are called according to his purpose. Notice Paul says all things work together. No, 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 notice those two words, all things goes well beyond the greatest event that can ever be imagined because God is bigger than any event. Here the writer Paul tells us, Christ tells us that he rules over all things. In other words, he rules over the good and the bad. Paul says it works together. 
that that phrase church works together comes from the Greek word synergeo where we get our English word synergy. In essence, it is when two separate entities, a positive and a negative, come together and work on a common project. I'm trying to suggest, church, that God is so bad that God can take your good. God can take your bad. Bring it together and allow it to work for your good. I, I, I'm saying he can take your friends and your enemies. Bring it together and allow it to work for your good. Yeah, he, he knows how to bring a deadbeat husband and now maybe your Prince Charles and bring it together and allow it to work for your good. Yeah, he knows how to bring failure and progress in your life so success can be possible in a way and he knows how to work it together for your good. And I want to suggest, church, if there was anybody in scripture who knows anything about God know how to work stuff together, I believe it was Joseph. You remember Joseph. Joseph had, in essence, one bad thing happen to him after another. He had a gift. His gift, many of you may remember, was interpreting dreams. But the very thing he was gifted to do got him in trouble with his brothers. It's because of his gifts, his brothers, what became jealous of him? And one day they caught Joseph, stripped him of his clothes, threw him into a pit, and along the way came some Ishmaelite slave traders. And his brother sold him into slavery to those Ishmaelite slave traders. They carried him right into Egypt where he was sold again to a man by the name of Potiphar. But I tell you now, Joseph can look back at everything that happened to him and see it through the lens of the providential hand of God. Because of this, watch this, if he didn't have the gift of interpreting dreams, his brothers would not have hated him. If his brothers would not have hated him, they would not have thrown him into a pit. If he had not been thrown into a pit, he would not have been sold to the Ishmaelite slave traders. Had he not been sold to the Ishmaelite slave traders, he would not have carried them into Egypt. You're going to catch it in a second. Had they not carried them into Egypt, he would not have met Potiphar. Had he not met Potiphar, Mrs. Potiphar would not have lied on him. Had Mrs. Potiphar not lied on him, he would not have been thrown in jail. Had he not been thrown in jail, he would have not met the two fellows who worked for Pharaoh. Had he not met the two guys who worked for Pharaoh, he would have not interpreted their dreams. Had he not been interpreted their dreams, they would have not told Pharaoh that he was able to interpret dreams. Had they not told Pharaoh he was able to interpret dreams, when the Bible says that the seven years of famine came, the people would have died, including his fathers and his brothers, and they would have starved to death. Had his brothers starved to death, there would be no nation Israel. Had there been no nation Israel, the baby would not have been born in Bethlehem. Had the baby not been born in Bethlehem, you and I would be stuck in our sins. I'm trying to suggest he had to go to the cross. Jesus had to go to the cross. And if he didn't go to the cross, you and I would be stuck in our sins. I'm saying God had to get Joseph in Egypt to get Jesus on the cross. And so I'm saying God can use the unpleasant. God can use the bad. God can use the ugly as a part of the plan to bring you into your purpose and into your destiny. I'm just saying, church, God has a plan for you. Paul says, and we know that all things are working together. He's working it together. I'm telling you, he's that kind of God. He's working it. He's working the good, the bad, the ugly, the indifferent. He's working it all together. Some of you not catching me, so let me see if I can flip it this way. Uh, you know, you wouldn't want to eat two cups of sugar by itself. You wouldn't, would not want to eat four cups of flour by itself. You wouldn't eat four raw eggs by itself. You wouldn't want to drink two tablespoons of vanilla extract by itself. Why? Because by itself it's too dry. By itself it's too bitter. By itself it's too sweet. By itself it's too potent. But when it's all worked together, everybody loves a slice of cake. I, I'm saying, I'm saying, church, God has this mixing spoon of your life that God is working it together. And I'm saying God has a plan for you. I need to turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, God has a plan for you. 
And that's God's word to someone here today who feels like giving up. God wants you to know he has a plan for you. That's a God's word to some sister who feels worthless. That don't, don't, don't settle for the good because you can settle for the good and miss out on the best. That's God's word to some brother who's trying to get out of the streets and stay in the sanctuary. God has a plan for you. That God's word to some single mother who feels like giving up on your child. God has a plan for her and has a plan for you. That there is indeed a bright side somewhere. That when your way seems dark and dreary, you don't have to worry because God is near. And if in your heart there is no song, just keep the faith and keep holding on. Turning your face down fast and pray because Jesus will always make a way I'm saying there is indeed a bright side somewhere the prophet Jeremiah said it this way I know the thoughts that I think toward you thoughts of good and not of evil to give you a future and a hope I'm saying God has a plan for you I know perhaps your mother, your father, maybe somebody abandoned you, but I want you to know you can be more. I know perhaps you had a baby before marriage, but I'm saying you can be more. Why? Because God has a plan for you. That's the long point, but I want to suggest not only God can work it out when you know God's plan, but then secondly, he can work it out when you know God's purpose. Notice what he says in verse 29 and 30. He says, for those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son so that he would be the firstborn among many brothers. Notice in the text, in essence, Paul says that God knows the suffering that the believer goes through daily. He, he, says, I, he says, I know. You're on the verge of divorce. He, he says, I know you were perhaps abandoned at an early age. He, he says, I know you've been struggling in school. But he says, I want you to know no matter how great the suffering and no matter how great the opposition and no matter how great the struggle, God is going to complete his purpose. I dare to turn to say, best turn to somebody and say, God is going to complete his purpose. And I know somebody here today, you came to church today perhaps with your spirit low because you feel nothing is working out for you. You, you said in your mind, if purpose comes at this cost of crying perhaps all day or crying all night, it's, it's not worth it. Some of you are thinking in your own mind, none of this is worth it. But notice what Paul says in verse 29. He says, for those whom he foreknew, he says, to conform into the image of his son. That, that, that's good. That, that, that it says God is trying to bring the good out of your life. That he, he allows us to go through trials. And I want you to know God is not out just to make us happy. God, God is not just out to prosper us. But God is trying to make us into the image of his son. I'm saying in short, he's trying to make you look less like yourself and more like God. That notice that word conform, it means to mold, it means to shape, it means to squeeze. It's like squeezing clay into a mold. The harder you squeeze it, the harder you press it, the more it takes on the image and the shape of the mold that you put it in. And sometimes the trouble I want you to know that's in your life is not your enemies. And I admit, church, I'll be real, I admit, I'll, I'll be real vulnerable. Sometimes the worst things I can't stand is well, oftentimes we over-spiritualize our issues. Oh, the devil's on your track. No, the devil is not always on your trail. Sometimes your enemy is, sometimes what you're going through is not always the enemy. Sometimes the trouble you're facing is simply God squeezing you. And I know you and I always love God's blessing. You love when God does something for you. But the moment God decides to break you, then you're nowhere to be found. But I want to suggest when God decides to squeeze you, this ought to be your response. Lord, if it's that way, just squeeze me then. I 
I'm saying mold me until I pray right. Mold me until I serve right. Mold me until I learn to live right. Mold me until I learn to love my enemies. God, I just want you to mold me. I, I'm trying to suggest, church, God can't bless you until you learn to be authentic in your own self. Some of you heard me tell you before that one of the best advice I, I received as a boy preacher growing up in our household was the simple thought that my father always said, whatever you are, son, be, be the very best you that you can be. In short, he would say, if you're an apple, be the best apple you can be. Don't change yourself to an orange because if you change yourself to an orange and God wants to come using an apple, you may forfeit your chance to being used by God. And I'm saying someone today, perhaps you're suffering from what I may call identity syndrome. That is, you're always changing yourself into something that you are not. And God's word today is stop changing yourself. God made you the way he made you. And he says in this text that God is not going to stop working on you until he has accomplished his purpose. But then Paul kept on writing. He says, whom he foreknew, he also predestined. In other words, Jesus knew beforehand what all would occur in the world. He knew drugs would be prevalent. He knew robbers and thieves were going to be dangerous. And because of that, he conformed his children to the image of his son, Jesus Christ. He says nothing can stop God's purpose for the believer. Why? Because it's predestined. In essence, it's set. It's marked off. That's God's word to someone here today who's nervous to stretch out on faith. I want you to know God has your back. He, he has your back because if you keep reading the text around verse 30, he said he's justified and glorified you. And when you keep reading that text, notice he says those two terms in the past tense. In other words, it's already done. That's why you can walk into your purpose because it's already done. You can stretch out and become that entrepreneur because you have the purpose to fulfill that God says. Whatever you need, whatever your purpose is, it can't be tampered with. It's all going to come to pass. I hear someone else was saying, Parks, that sounds good, but God hasn't told me what my purpose is and my life is in shambles. Well, allow me to tell you that's in the darkest times of our lives. That's really when God is the brightest and he shows up at his best. So, so sometimes our purpose comes, I want you to know, from the very thing that caused you pain. Maybe you didn't catch it. I'll say that again. I said sometimes our purpose comes from the very thing that gives you pain. You, you, and I want you to know you have a job to do that you can't quit and that God still has some work for you to do and he will not stop working until he accomplishes his purpose in you. I'm trying to tell you fear ought not be a factor for you because he is with you. Here, let me give you this last thing, and I'll bid you a good day. Finally, I want you to know you can be free from fear when you remember his promise. Notice these last verses. Verse 31 through verse 39 encompasses the security of the believer. Paul says, we do not need to fear the past, present, or future because we are secure in the love of Christ. And here Paul, in essence, presents five quick arguments to prove that there's no separation between the believer and the Lord. He said, let me give you evidence one. The first thing you need to know, God is for us. Let the church say God is for us. He says it real clearly. If you keep your Bible over verse 31, he says, what then shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Listen, church, God is for us, and he proved it by giving his son. And I want you to know God is making all things work for us. And I believe, my brothers and sisters, we all need to wake up every morning and remember that God is for us. We need to wake up knowing that even when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord will lift up a standard. Why? Because God is for us. But not only that, he gives exhibit two. He wants you to know Christ died for us. 
that when we were yet sinners, God gave us his best. He gave us his son and he allowed his son to die for a sinful, a scandalous, a dirty and ungrateful group of people. Don't look at me like you're not dirty or ungrateful. All of us have had the tendency to be ungrateful, but yet he still allowed God to die for us. And the Bible says he was wounded for our transgressions and he was bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. I'm saying it doesn't matter because God did it for us and it's so because of that it doesn't matter what you have done you could be a drunk like Noah you could be the president of the kitty cat club like Rahab you could be a liar like Abraham a persecutor like Paul but I want you to know God's grace is not so far that he can't pick you up and because Christ died and got up you can get up as well I'm saying you can get up from depression you can get up from low self esteem you can get up from the voice oh because he died for us but then also I want you to know he justified us notice verse 33 this text this means he justified that that means Jesus declared us righteous even when Satan would accuse us of being so sinful Jesus says in essence don't worry about them because they belong to me and think about it, Satan could take us to court and charge us for being liars, cheaters, and all of that is true. But you know, you and I ought to thank God because Christ is not like the persecutor. He's not like the, like the prosecutor. J Jesus paid it all, and all to him we owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, and he washed us white and asked him. That because he justified us. Then he keeps writing. He talks about how he intercedes for us. Notice that same Savior who died for us is now on the right hand of God as our, our high priest. And he is interceding for us. And I'm glad that, that even though I don't deserve and even though you don't deserve his grace. The good news is that when God sees us struggling, he doesn't mind giving us a little bit of whatever we need. He, he see you struggling, he'll, he'll pour a little more mercy. He'll, he'll see you struggling, he'll give a little more strength. he see you struggling and give you some peace. Oh, because he's interceding for us. But then finally he closes by talking about how he loves us. Paul proved it, that God can't fail us. But we can fail him. And in the last five verses, Paul explains how nothing can separate us from the love of God. That God in essence does not shelter us from the difficulties of life because we need them for spiritual growth. And furthermore, according to verse 37, the Bible says he gives us power to conquer. In essence, he says you and I don't need to fear life, death, why? Because he gives us the power to conquer. That's why you could go to bed tonight and go to night in confidence knowing there is nothing that you can't handle. Why? Because you have his promise. He promised, Lord, I'll be with you always, even into the end of the age. He, he, he promised, if you weak, he says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as an eagle, run and not be weary, walk and not faint. He says, if you need a rock, God is our refuge and strength and a very present help in the times of trouble. I'm saying you have his promise promise he he promised you don't know where to go trust in the Lord with all your heart lean not to your own understanding and in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path I bid you good day may the Lord bless you real good I'm just trying to tell you you can be free from fear when you know you have the right one with you I, I, 
I'm saying I don't know who you have but I got the right one I heard he's Adam's redeemer he's Abel's vindicator he's Ezekiel's will in the middle of a will he's Noah's ark he's Abraham's sacrifice he's Moses's bush shown fire he's a will in the middle of a will grandmama will call him he's my walking king he's Matthew's king he's Mark's servant he's Luke's great physician John's word made flesh acts coming of the Holy Ghost I'm saying church you can make it if you know you have the right one with you that's why I like that song that song that says if anyone should ever write my life story for whatever reason there may be just know that Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to me I did a turn to your neighbor say neighbor Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to me. Amen. What well, God has, God has completed, amen, this moment in time. And normally we will ask that you have petitions that you want to give up or extend to God. Uh -huh. And we have our, pra our prayer warriors, amen, is standing, amen, before us to plead, amen, and to intervene with your request this morning. Amen. And the Lord will never shy away from you because he have too much love for you oh, yeah. you. to not to meet your needs because he has the supply all we have to do is acknowledge the goodness of him and watch what God do he will come in when we are troubled he will wipe it away we may be crying but he will wipe the tears you may have stumbled but he'll get you up you may have doubted but he will give you faith if you believe. Will you come and give God your petition because he loves us too much. Pastor Park has preached. Don't allow fear to sink in. But rule with faith the confidence that God has given to you. And be real about it. Lord, please help me right now. I need you. God is willing, y'all. You don't have to be ashamed to come. Because if you be ashamed of the Father, He will be ashamed before you, which are in heaven. Will you come? Amen. I'm going to pray. Father, we thank you. We give you the most high honor because of who you are to us. Father, we thank you that you have given to us life. Life that no other could have given. Father, we praise you for that. And Lord, I ask you at this time, I pray that you will shower down even the things that we don't know that we need. You'll give it to us anyway. Father, we thank you. We give you praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, let every heart say amen. 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 Come on, if you don't mind, put your hands together. Give God great praise. Uh, to all of our visitors, please, uh, let me, if those of you who may need to leave, allow me to give you a blessing. Now may the grace of God, sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, allow it to rest reform renew this day and the days ahead until we meet at Jesus' feet, the bishop of the church, the bishop of ourselves, go in peace, go in love, go in serve. Amen. Uh,